Uh, hello everyone. Uh, so today I will give this lightning talks uh, system integration with the Integrant. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you uh, uh, have used the Integrant. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. uh, how many of you used the uh, component or no component? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, actually, um, th this is um, uh, stolen from uh, the creator of Integrant. Uh, what we think about our application in a functional world. Um, it's like a um, tree. All the branches are our libraries or our um, functions. Then we, we have a way to composite them together to become this trunk, our application. So um, in, in our function world, in closure world, we, we are function, we, we, we uh, uh, <coughs> try to get a proper way to uh, composite all these libraries and uh, integrate all of them to become our application. Um, I think component is uh, our first uh, try. Then we have mounts, we have all the things. But uh, I think uh, integrant is the best for now. Uh, so you can see we have our domain, we have our database, uh, our API, we have our JT, uh, everything. So how we integrate them together. Um, or from uh, another, how do you say, another way, normally we are developing our libraries. Or because in Closure or Lisp world, we're doing work bottom up. So normally what we're doing is we, we try everything small, or then we have our own libraries then we integrate them together. <coughs> so how to do that? Um, if you have no experience of any components or integrants, um, or any of you have some closure experience um, to develop an uh, application. Uh, OK. So uh, normally, how, how you do? Uh, how do you integrate uh, uh, different libraries together? Just, uh, it's just a regular web app, so I just use uh, ring and composure. Ring composure, so you, you put everything in one namespace. Okay. Uh, database? Do you have a database? Uh, Mongo. Uh, Mongo. Then, so how, how you manage your connection? Uh, I think I just have Dev. Yeah. Then global thing. Right. Uh, global thing, we, we all know, cannot be reloaded. So every time when you to try to do something, you, you need to stop. Or actually something not good may happen because of the state. Uh, so you, you could try the way later. Uh, normally we use components or integrants. Uh, both of them now works on closure and the closure script. Um, it <coughs> make us can do our, to use the reload workflow. So everything you change, you reset, then it will start the, to get the whole system back for you. So you don't need to uh, concern about the state which may broken or your connection lost, uh, everything. Um, but the, the, why we say integrants is the best for, uh, from <coughs> our experience. Um, integrants is data driven. So that's the essence, um, or that's the preferred way uh, in Closure or Lisp world. Components is uh, code driven. I'm not sure whether you used it. It's need you to write the code to, uh, you say, uh, I build a map, then I, uh, you, this map, I need to create one instance to create a web or create DB to do all these things. It can finish all your job, but it's all in the code. Um, <clears throat> Integrants is more functional. If you use components, you know every instance you, you need to do, you need to um, create, use a record to wrap it. 
then you, you need to use the life cycle protocol to have the start and the stop method. But in Interground, it's do it in a functional way. So you don't have to um, have any protocol. You don't have to have the, uh, <coughs> how do you say, uh, the uh, record to wrap the things. OK? Uh, so this is a basic uh, configuration used by uh, Interground, uh, which I copied from the GitLab. Uh, <coughs> so you can see uh, it's very um, easy. You, you can define your handler. You can define uh, what you have. So this is maybe the two libraries. Uh, so then you can see that uh, in JT, you could see its handler depends on the, the handler grid I defined. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and also, you have two ways to do it. One, you can use the def define your config in the code. Or another way is you can put this map into your EDN because it's an EDN. You just replace that IG ref with a read function, um, the tag ref, like a read macro. So then you read it. So <clears throat> what Integram do is, uh, in next page, it has, <coughs> OK, uh, sorry, uh, here. Uh, then you define your instance with some init key or uh, so the init key is to bring up the instance. So you can see it's run JT. It's called get the handlers from what you defined previously. <coughs> OK. And also, you can define the hot key, suspend key, resume key. The hot key is the um, the hot key is uh, similar to what uh, components provide the stop, but in component, Uh, in, in component, because they use the protocol. So you must in, to put something there for the stop method. But in integrant, you don't need. So uh, it's just uh, you ignore the hotkey if your instance no need to stop. And it also provides you suspend and resume. So real, like you, you want to keep your connection pool not touched, then uh, you just uh, need to reboot your services or web application, uh, web server, then to hook back. You, you can do this with suspend and resume. And uh, to do the reload work, you can use their method called init, suspend, resume, hot. So everything is a function, and uh, it's very clear. So uh, there is some advanced topic. Um, it can use some de derived keys. So you can uh, derive some like um, web, then JT is a web, then um, maybe immutant is a web. So wh when you start the web, you, you say I init all the web. So it will bring up everything you derived from that keys. Make sense? Oh. It also provides you to define the specs. So it will use these specs to check the options you provided or the, your config options provided to the instance, like what port should be a number or the a range of that port number, um, so kinds of things. So when you init this instance, it's check all the instance, all your configurations uh, to <coughs> meet the specs or not. 
it can uh, load from a namespace. Um, it, with integrants, you need to uh, pick up the um, key carefully. For example, in here, you see the adapt JT. Uh, normally, you can use um, your namespace uh, qualified key to do that. Then you load that namespace. Everything defines every um, you need to, uh, this integrant method defined in that name, namespace will be loaded. And also, the last is the duct framework. If you are interested, you can have a look. It's, um, it's a framework use the uh, integrant. It pro already provides you the uh, SQL, JT, ring, all these kind of things you can use immediately. You just uh, put the configurations and there are keys there. Uh, you can use immediately. So I think um, that's all my part for this lightning talk. I think next time, uh, the left time is for you to, you can ask some questions. Actually, um, <clears throat> this also changed a bit of our, of our workflow. So we can focus on the small piece of, of our application. For example, we use Dev to make to do some temporary work, maybe just below the namespace, other things na below a namespace. Later, we remove all, all such kind of things, then use Integrant to um, integrate all other things like uh, GraphQL, like Composure API. Uh, I, I'm not sure, <laughs> you, you, you can try, you can think about it. Um, we, we're using our work, it's quite amazing. Yeah. Uh, any questions? <laughs> uh, could you explain a bit more about how this reloaded workflow actually goes? Uh, um, for the reload workflow, um, there, there is a call integrant repo. Uh, what it did is um, it's user atom to store your system. When you call the init of integrant, it use the maps, then use your reference to, um, to do the initiation for you. It use the reference to bring up, to get a graph of the dependencies, then it will I initiate all of them, then to inject these dependencies. Then it will um, save into an atom. After you redo the reset, it will actually do, do the similar work again. Use the uh, tools namespace to reset your code, then do the reload. Uh, but is the point of this system just so that uh, you have a better development experience, or do you actually use Integrant uh, during uh, the deployment time as well. Uh, in the de deployment time, um, actually, it's the I, I think I use, uh, but more capability provided by Duct's framework. It's doing some um, how do you say? It can override your configs. For example, it provides you uh, your product config in IDN. Then you it you can specify your DEV config, test config. Then you, you can give the orders uh, to duct. Um, you say, I only want to load, um, I, I want to load from the test. So it has the sequence, means uh, it will use your test to overwrite your production. So you can do some change. Then th that's, uh, I think, um, that's you used in our CI and uh, product deployment fl flow. Thanks.